All right, let's get let's get this for the Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Come get it, come get it, come get it, come get it, come get it. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Everyone smile. Yeah, party. Are you okay? He's not are you okay? Reality. All right, do me a favor, just please stand over here. Are you hurt or injured? Christian. Okay, just do me a favor, just please stand right there, okay? Ma'am, are you okay? I'm okay. Are you He's hurt or injured? No, okay, do me a favor, just stand by right here, okay? What you got out there? No, I'm 
no, leave me alone. We were, I was just going home. I was just going home. We we're just going home. Okay. Were you were you driving this vehicle? No. Which vehicle were you driving? That one over there? Okay. Where were you sitting at, ma'am? I was sitting on the right. Of which vehicle, ma'am? This vehicle. He was just taking me home. Okay. Let me see your arm. Okay. Just make sure you just stay there, okay? Okay. Have you had anything to drink today, ma'am? I know I should have waited for my mom, but... Okay. What is your name? I want her mom Okay. All right. Why don't you do me a favor? Let's come stand over here for me, please. I wake up with my siblings. I want to I want to do some tests just to make sure that you That's haven't been driving under the influence of alcohol, okay? You said you have okay. been drinking, right? Okay. What have you been drinking? He was just he asked me if I wanted to ride home, and I said yeah. Okay. Shots of I what? Had to call my mom. Um, she'll be on her way. Some beer, a little bit of vodka. Okay. So the first test I want time. you to go ahead and do is just put your right foot in front of your in front of your left. Okay. Put your hands to your side. Okay. So you'll start something like this. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, until you get to nine. Go ahead and start. One, two, three. Hey guys, can you help around with the race? Four, Gurney? Five, what happened here? Head on collision. Nine. One ejection. Ten. Two in here. Okay. What's you want to return? Do nine steps back. Do you know where you're at right now? What? Uh, no worries, don't move your head at all. Can I get someone to hold T-spine on him? Okay. Can you hold T-spine on him too? Yes, please. Where's that helicopter going to land? Where's it going to land? Right here. Yeah, we got all the parts there. Good deal. All right. Okay. So what I want you to go ahead and do is just stand here for me, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead and do right. Right, okay, go ahead and do left. And go ahead and do left. Okay, just uh, do me a favor, just go ahead and relax here. I'm gonna go to my car, I'll be right back, okay? As soon as we get her out, we're gonna get her on some oxygen. She's on the back border, right? So go ahead and take a deep breath, and go ahead and blow until I tell you to stop. Harder. There you go. Okay. So, ma'am, based on on your uh, your alcohol content, How are you you're telling me that you've been drinking today. Your symptoms and your test, I believe that you are under the influence of alcohol. Go ahead and face that way, put your hands behind your back for me. You are being placed under arrest. Okay. It's going to take a little while, we're going to get a blood pressure on him while he's in here. We're working on that side. Huh? Just like that. Just one more cut? All right. This way. We can see Spiner. We can see Spiner from there. If you want, we can move the seat forward, and then we can get the uh, backboard right underneath the butt. Layer backwards. Okay. Sounds good. Go ahead and have a seat, ma'am. And watch your head. You're just going. Underneath, underneath her, actually her. Yeah, there it is. Lift up her hip a little bit, and then you can wedge that board underneath. Don't cut it yet. Okay, guys. So we're going to fly out this one right here. Altered mental status. Seems like she has some distension in the abdomen. Uh, and squeeze my hand a little bit. And then we got paralysis in there. We're going to take it to the trauma center. I um, wasn't able to tell, but both of them are fairly Which hand do you write with? My right hand. We have 111 on straps over here. We have an open fracture over there. We're going to be taking her. Here. Ma'am, are you awake? What's going on? You gotta tell me what happened. Where are you hurting right now? Is hurting where I'm feeling? Looks like we've got a bad contusion to the head. Um, open skull fracture. 
All right, yeah. go ahead and I put that on there. I got tape right here. No, you just Are you going to put it on the board? Yeah. There. You just put the, the sticky side you underneath there. Okay. Underneath there. That's fine. There you go. Good thing is she has a pulse right now. All right. Uh, we weren't able to get a blood pressure before the extrication. We're going to put her on a helicopter right now, and she's going to get flown out to the trauma center, OK? Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna get this one underneath. Move his hand. Yeah. There, move slowly and Watch the sharp edge, watch the sharp edge. Yeah, we got it, we got it. Alright. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna give you some pain medication in the back of the ambulance. We're gonna take good care of you. Your friends are doing okay for right now. There's a yellow handle right there. I need you to grab it with your good arm. Get moving. He's, he's hurt bad. Okay. Bryce, are you okay? Bryce! Seventeen-year-old uh, female involved in NBA, right front passenger, uh, wearing a seatbelt, loss of consciousness upon impact. Um, I get diminished lung sounds on the right side. Uh, unable to obtain an IV. Uh, salt pressure has dropped. Uh, purple at about seventy. Uh, we're gonna need probably two IVs. Unable to get it. Okay, I got no pulse. We need to go ahead as far as it is. She yeah, looks no like she's in deep bed. Start compressions. Got it. Got another IV established over here on this side. We'll go ahead with the epi. Epi 1 milligram is in with a 10cc flush. flush. Okay. okay. Go ahead and continue on with first compression. Go ahead and get ready to shock. Ready? You're clear, I'm clear, everybody clear? Clear, clear. Continue on with chest compressions. In about two minutes, minutes since the last epi. So go ahead and get ready to um, administer another dose of epi right now. One milligram of epi is in. Right there, right there, right there. Good. So nothing as far switch. as pulse check? Pulse check. 
I got, I got nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. Continue on the CPR. Clear. Clear. Third round, nothing. Third round, zero. We'll flush. Clear. 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 I got nothing. They haven't been able to regain a pulse. Um, we've done as far as what we can with shocks, the delivery of the FE. There's no beat whatsoever. Did anybody object to calling it at this time? Time. 14. So pronounce 1448. Thank you for all your help. Here's your stuff, ma'am. I'm going to put you in here for now. Um, I'm going to bring you out in like a minute or two once I get your mom on the phone and I'll give you a five minute phone call with her, okay? Okay. All right. Your daughter, Anne Marie, was in a really, that accident was horrible. Yes, um, and we worked on her a long time and did everything possible. We really did. Um, but the injuries that she sustained were, they were devastating. And um, I'm sorry to tell you that um, your daughter didn't make it. She I'm very sorry. Do you have any questions? Can I can I answer? There's something else you can do. We we did we did everything. We we did CPR. We shocked her. We we shocked her several times. We gave her every medication that we could possibly give her, and um, her injuries were they were they were devastating. As far as at the scene, they were not able to. As far as get a pulse, we did everything as far as to give her the medicine to start her heart here. We even shocked her three different times with no response. My apologies to you. you. Spend as much time as you need. Do you want me to call someone for you? No. No. What do we got going on? What happened? Uh, um, we, we were just having, we were just partying. Partying. So mm -hmm. did you have something to drink tonight? Yeah, I had a little. A little. How much is a little? Uh, I can't exactly remember. You don't remember. Okay, so what's bothering you right now? Uh, I can't feel my, my lower legs. You can't feel your lower legs. Do you feel this? No. Feel this? No. Anything here? Mm -mm. Anything here? No. How about as far as this right here? You feel no. it in touching? No. Nothing whatsoever? Mm -mm, no, ma'am. All right. How about up here? Yes. You feel this up here, but nothing down below. Okay. We'll go ahead and order as far as the CT x-rays. We'll get some as far as medicine, but let me go talk to the parents and let them know as far as what I found. I'll be right back. Show you where they're at. 
Family for brides? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Fudd, you come this way. We'll talk here in the hall. But just come on, we'll get a little bit of privacy. Sounds to me like um, your son has had a little bit to drink. Um, unfortunately, he has sustained some pretty serious injuries, meaning he has a um, broken back and is paralyzed from the waist down. Mm. So I'm probably going to be able to walk, so I'm going to take you this way so that you can see him a little bit further. Okay. okay. As far as on either side, see him. Right now, we still have him supported because of the injury of his back. Come on up to both sides. I'm up. Oh. What are you doing? I guess you're not playing Friday, huh? Were well, you the front or the back? Mm, to the back. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. What happened? I I just took a few drops and I thought I was fine. And we got in a car accident. And I don't know if Andrew's okay. I don't know. But I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Did you turn into the car? I don't know. I don't know, but I, I think it was bad. Sorry. Who was in the car? It was me and Anne Marie, and Bryce was in the back. I'm sorry. Just. I'm sorry too. <laughs> what does it mean? What's gonna happen? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. College, I mean, a lot's going to be affected by this. Family, we what had great thing? plans. You guys have great dreams. <laughs> you know, one mistake and can change your whole life, your whole future, everything. We have a lot, a lot of thinking and explaining to do. There's other families involved that you hurt. Oh my gosh. Physically and emotionally hurt other people. And you got to live with that now for a long time. Uh, hopefully everybody's okay, Sammy. I don't know. <sighs> there was a crash this afternoon uh, in front of Lamar PD, or Lamar High School, excuse me. And a um, drunk driver was involved. Your son, Chris, was in one of the cars that was involved. And unfortunately, Chris did not survive the accident. He was killed on the scene. He's been transported here, and we're on uh, the coroner's getting his body ready so that you can make a positive identification. I'm very, very sorry for your loss. The car Chris was in was not involved in it, drunk driving. Those kids were all sober. Can we see him? Uh, the coroner's getting him in a position to where you can't see him. You won't be able to have uh, a lot of contact with him. And I should prepare you um, because he died on scene. Um, he does have injuries and there is blood and they haven't cleaned his body and prepared him. He won't look the way that you would imagine. He would look for a funeral. He's, 
it looks like a crash victim, and that can be very traumatic. So I'm sorry about that as well. But. Follow me. Right this way. Everybody. I went to a party, Mom. I remembered what you said. You told me not to drink, Mom, so I drank soda instead. I really felt proud inside, Mom, the way you said I would. I didn't drink and drive, Mom, even though the other said I should. I know I did the right thing, Mom. I know you're always right. Now the party is finally ending, Mom, as everyone drives out of sight. As I got into my car, Mom, I know I'd get home in one piece because the way you raised me, Mom, so responsible and sweet. I started to drive away, Mom, as I pulled onto the road. The other car didn't see me, Mom, and hit me like a load. As I lie here on the pavement, Mom, I hear the policeman say, the other guy is drunk, Mom, and now I'm the one who'll pay. I'm lying here dying, Mom. I wish you'd get here soon. How come this happened to me, Mom? My life burst like a balloon. There is blood all around me, Mom. Most of it is mine. I hear the paramedics say, Mom, I'll be dead in a short time. I just wanted to tell you, Mom, I swear I didn't drink. It was the others, Mom, the others that didn't think. He didn't know where he was going, Mom. He was at the same party as I. The only difference is, Mom, he drank and I will die. Why do people drink, Mom? It can ruin your whole life. I'm feeling sharp pains now, Mom. Pains just like a knife.
I'm Angie Scaldi, Anne Marie's mom. Standing here in front of you today saying goodbye to my daughter is one of the most difficult things I've ever done and something I never imagined I would have to do. Her time with us was far too brief and we are all beyond shocked and saddened. From the moment she was born on a leap day, Anne Marie has been special. She was born with a head full of thick, dark hair that eventually turned into a bunch of curls. When she was little, people would often stop us and comment on her Shirley Temple ringlets. It wasn't always easy to care for such crazy curly hair, but as she grew, she learned to love it as much as we did. She was actually really great with hair and would often braid her little sister's hair for me, which was appreciated by Elizabeth because I could never quite do it right. As the oldest child, Anne-Marie was always helpful with her sister Elizabeth and her brother Will. She would play with them when they were little and most recently would help us drive them to practices in school. Anne-Marie and Will were only two years apart and they were good friends. I would often hear them laughing and listening to music together. She was such a positive role model and they will miss her dearly. Anne-Marie has always enjoyed being involved with school activities. <laughs> she was an excellent student and an active member of CSF. She had so much fun going on the college campus visits with her friends, especially the overnight trips. She had a few colleges picked out and was excited about her future. If you knew Anne Marie, you know she could deliver a convincing argument. She was considering putting those skills to good use with a career in law. She had such a bright future. Volleyball was one of Anne Marie's passions. She played on a club team during the off season and especially loved being part of the LHS volleyball family. She enjoyed all of the coaches and players and was really looking forward to the upcoming volleyball season senior year. Anne-Marie was also passionate about singing. She loved being part of the choir. Sorry. And made many great friends during her three years with the program. She recently met many new friends and had the best time being part of the musical Little Shop of Horrors. She had a beautiful voice and was becoming serious about pursuing vocal performance after high school. She especially enjoyed sharing this passion with Jared, who was always a great source of support and encouragement to her. It means a lot to us that the choir is here performing today. Thank you. Uh, we would like to thank everyone for their incredible support during this difficult time. It is heartbreaking to say goodbye to Anne Marie, our loving daughter, devoted sister, caring friend. She was taken from us way too early. We will always remember her, and she will live on in our hearts forever. Thank you. Dear mom and dad, I can't even imagine the pain you're going through right now. I couldn't ask for two better people to have raised me over the past 17 years. I'm so sorry that I had to leave you this way. <laughs> Thank you for sacrificing so much to make my life as amazing as it was. Even though we fought sometimes, I know you only wanted what was best for me. I'm sorry you'll never get to see me grow up. Mom, you'll never get to take pictures at my senior prom. And dad, you'll never get to walk me down the aisle. All because of a stupid, reckless decision to drink and drive. I hope you'll both remember me forever. I love you both so much. Your daughter, Anne-Marie Scaldi. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Kathy Avalos. I'm Christopher's mom. Good morning, I stand here today in complete disbelief. No words can describe the sorrow, anguish our family has had to endure. Christopher was taken from us tragically, far too early by a young lady's poor choice to drink and drive. No parent should ever have to bury their child. Not only have our lives been shattered, but this young lady's life will never be the same. 
Christopher was strong-willed, intelligent, and loving young man. We loved him dearly. We were so proud of everything he had accomplished in his short life. We will miss his beautiful smile, free spirit. Christopher loved his sister and brother very much. He was very protective of his sister, Desiree, and his brother, Ethan. He loved performing with his cousins on family occasions, with them singing at the top of their lungs. Ever since he was a baby, he loved being in the pool. Christopher was part of the water polo team his last three years of his life. He enjoyed being part of the team and the water polo and swim team family. In the summer, he coached young children for the local swim team Aqua Jets. He was quick-witted and had a great sense of humor, always trying to make family and friends laugh. Christopher loved to cook and bake. Many of his family friends were lucky to try his new creations. He could whip up a gourmet meal and our favorite chocolate chip cookies in no time. Christopher was preparing to take his next step in his faith. In two weeks, he was to be confirmed with the Holy Spirit. And on that same day, he was to attend his junior prom. He so enjoyed dances and all the moments he spent with his many friends. We will rely on our faith to get through this difficult time. Recently, the talk in the house was what college Christopher wanted to attend. His dream was to attend Stanford University and major in biology. He wanted to become a pediatric surgeon. It breaks my heart knowing he will never be able to fulfill his dreams of becoming a physician, husband, or having children of his own. We will never get to see him walk the line at high school graduation or college. It will not be easy carrying on life without our wonderful son, Christopher. We now have an angel watching over us. We thank God for the 16 short years here on earth, and we continue to grieve for the life he was denied by the actions of a drunk driver. We will miss him terribly. I'm sure he's dancing in heaven with his grandma. We, he will live in our hearts forever. Thank you. Dear mom and poppy, I don't know where to begin. From the moment I was born, you have nurtured and cared for me in ways that have shaped me into the person that I am today. Without you, I would be nothing, and in return, you are my everything. We always joke about how I am heartless and I have no emotion, but I swear to you that all the heart and love that I have is with you. From when I was a baby with colic crying in the middle of the night, or a teenager complaining about things you didn't buy me, you always put my needs before yours and listened to all the crying and all the complaining when you didn't have to. Poppy, I am sorry that I left you so suddenly. I'm sorry that you will never get to see me grow into the man that you have taught me to be. I am sorry that I won't be there when you're too old to care for yourself and provide you with the love and provisions you did for me. Mom, I'm sorry that I ever questioned you or made you feel like less of a mom because to me, you are the most perfect and exceptional mother anyone could ask for. I am sorry that you and Poppy will never have the chance to spoil my grandkids. But above all, I am sorry for leaving you. Ethan, I am sorry that we have never seen eye to eye all the time. You look up to me as an example, and I would give anything to be playing baseball with you right now. Desi, you were my first partner in crime. You are the person I look to for all advice above anyone. What to wear to school, what to tell my friends, and above all, how long your essays had to be. I am sorry that I will never get to see your first child. I am sorry that I will never get to see you walk down the aisle to the person you love. Just promise me that you won't settle for anything less than you deserve, which if I'm concerned is everything. Don't ever forget about your little annoying brother that just had to do what you did and always took a no as a yes. Always keep me in your heart. I love you all and we'll be watching over you with grandma and grandpa. Love, Christopher. All right, I record reflect the defendant is present in court. Uh, counsel, you want to state your appearances, please? 
Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, William Perry of the William Perry Law Firm appearing with and on behalf of the minor Samantha C., who is president in court. Keith Fagundes for the people. All right, uh, <clears throat> defendant, you need to stand to be arraigned for judgment. Can you stand? Ma'am, you stand convicted in count one of uh, violating penal code section 187, the second degree murder of Christopher Avalos in count two of violating penal code section 187, the second degree murder of Anna Schild. Count three for violating vehicle code section 23153, that is driving under the influence and causing injury to Bryce Aguilar and Maria Montoya Valdez. Mr. Perry, is there any legal cause why judgment should not now be pronounced? No, Your Honor. All right, you may be seated. Mr. Perry, does the defense want to be heard? Yes, Your Honor, we would. Um, Your Honor, before the court is the minor, Samantha, and we understand and are aware that the maximum sentence she could be facing here, and we assume that the people are going to be requesting, is a sentence of 41 years to life, given the terms of the uh, charges she's been convicted of. Um, she is keenly aware of that fact. We would request and respectfully submit to the court and ask that the court consider a lesser term, the mitigated term here, for the following reasons. Samantha is a 17-year-old girl. She has no prior record of any kind. She has never been a troubled day in her life, either in school or with the law. This is a crime lacking in intent or any criminal sophistication. We understand intent is not the uh, primary legislative uh, factor here, but we feel it is important to raise a statement in mitigation. Samantha has a bright future ahead of her. She did until now. She is an honor student with a 3.7 above GPA. She's a letterman, soccer player. She is a member of the CSF and Jesus Club, FCA, many sports. She was intending to go to college, study broadcasting, and continue her soccer career at the collegiate level. Your Honor, we would submit to the court that the maximum sentence of 41 to life is not necessary to either punish or to rehabilitate Samantha adequately, that those means can be achieved amply by a lesser mitigated sentence for the reasons set forth as follows. This is absolutely a horrible tragedy. It's a terrible crime. And no one's more aware of that than Samantha. But what message are we sending by giving the maximum to a kid with no prior record, no intent, who made one really, really bad, dumb mistake? Is a message of one chance and you're done for the rest of your life, life in prison? Is that necessary to punish her, send a message, rehabilitate her? We would submit no. If she had a prior DUI or a prior record of some kind, then yeah, that would make more sense to, to punish her in a more stern manner. But she doesn't. She has a stellar record until now. Many lives have been forever altered. Lives have been lost, injuries told out, and those ripple effects don't just end with those four people. Their families, friends, loved ones also feel the pain. But Samantha and her family also feel the pain. And we still, she still has a chance, if the court is inclined, to give her a lesser sentence, which the court has the authority and discretion to do, to come out with some life left to do good, to be a citizen, to be a force for good, and to have, perhaps atone for her terrible mistakes. And that's the chance we're asking the court to give her. She can still be a productive citizen if she gets out of prison at some point in her life with, an, with time to do so. At the end of the day, this is a young kid who made a terrible mistake. Terrible mistake. People make mistakes, especially kids. But we need to remember that these were her friends too. Every minute of every day for the rest of her life, she has to live with this terrible mistake, this terrible lapse in judgment for the rest of her life. And yes, she gets and we get that at least she still has a life. They don't. We understand that. And no one is more sorry about that than she is. 
maybe, maybe their parents, but Samantha gets it. And so what's the rest of her life look like? She does have a life, but what, what, what's that form, what the form of her life is going to take? This court, the very experienced court, has a choice. The court can send a message of one mistake and you're done. The rest of your life in prison, maximum, no second chances. Understandable, given the horrible consequences. However, this court can also send a different message, a message of hope and second chances. Sure, there must be punishment. There must be consequences. And there will be. And we're not suggesting that there shouldn't be. But there can also be a message of hope. We ask this court to give her a chance with a lower mitigated term and send a message that, yeah, you can make a terrible mistake, but one day you might have a chance to atone and make up for it and be a productive citizen. We're asking this court to give her the mitigated chance, mitigated sentence to give her that chance. And again, we understand, she understands that these victims never got that chance. Their parents never got a chance to say goodbye. She understands that. And no one is more remorseful than she is. And we need to remember before she gets hauled away and if you have the inclination to cheer or jeer her as she goes off. She's one of you. She's a kid too. These were her friends too. This could have been any one of you. Could have been any one of us. But she's a kid. She made a mistake. She's never been in trouble before. She's sorry, Your Honor. And these were her friends too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Mr. Fagundes, would the people like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. The words we heard from Mr. Perry are too little, too late, Your Honor. Uh, as he acknowledges, and I hope Sammy acknowledges, that Chris Avalos and Anne Marie Scaldi will never be able to ask for a second chance. Their parents will never get to turn back the clock and ask for that second chance. There's no worse fate in life than to bury your own child. There is certainly no worse fate in life than to have your mobility taken from you. There's no worse fate in life than to be maimed. People who choose to drink and drive in this day and age are murderers. That's why this is second degree murder. It is black heart murder. It is having a clear indifference to human life. You have uh, thousands of pounds of vehicle under your control when you are clearly impaired, driving down the road just to have some fun. That is selfish, it is senseless, and it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake at all. It is an intended act done out of selfishness. And as we hear the defendant now plea for a future, a future that she denied others because of her selfishness, we have one thing at, at stake here, and that's accountability. This isn't about punishment and retribution. This isn't about making things right because you can never tell this family that things will ever be right for them. This is about accountability. And yes, there are consequences for every single action and choice that we make in life. This was a deadly one for her. Anne-Marie Scaldi wishes she could stand before you and plead for a second chance, but she can't. And Chris Avalos, the same, as well as the, all the victims in this case. And I say all the victims because family members will forever remember this incident. And this incident, as we lawyers like to call it, is really a collision. It's an intended, clearly intended act that never has any benefit for anyone. Your Honor, this case is not a case about if or when these deaths occur. We do these sentencings every single day in our courthouses across this country. More than 14,000 people a year die as a result of DUI collisions, which are completely avoidable. And as a side note, if you think about 15 years of war in the Middle East, we have not targeted that number in all those 15 years, but yet we hit it every single year in this country out of pure selfishness. The sentence imposed in this case, Your Honor, due to the second degree murders involved are mandatory sentences. And the court has very little discretion unless you're gonna offer uh, probation to this person. And probation falls far short of holding her accountable for her conduct, her choices, and her actions. When we say that this is not a question of if or when these things will happen, we know the fact that it happens every 15 minutes in this country. The real question here is who? 
And in this case, you can look to your right or to your left and see who the next victim will be of somebody's selfish decisions. So, Your Honor, although she's young, with the promising uh, prior history that she might proclaim at this point, all the more reason why this certain circumstance here was completely avoidable. All of her years of upbringing, and I'm sure she has a great family, but her great family didn't prevent these deaths. And she has to know that, yes, she will be held accountable. And people need to be held accountable for their conduct. We think it's completely appropriate, Your Honor, that you sentence the defendant to 15 to life for each death, as well as uh, three years for the DUI, driving under the influence, as well as a multiple victim enhancement, as well as GBI enhancement for the broken leg, as well as paralysis enhancement which puts us well above 41 to life. However, we understand legally we have to take the multiple victim out if we're going to get the great bodily injury. And so we are happy to let three years be a leniency to her in order to get the eight years that she so badly deserves for injuring and maiming two people as well as murdering two others. With that, we are asking for 41 to life, Your Honor, because it's really the fair sentence and it's the only thing that will demand accountability in this case. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Fagundes. I would note that the defendant is young, I am aware of that, and that her crimes stem from the choice to drink at home before driving her friends to a party, a decision which led her to hitting a car driven by Christopher Avalos, who was driving Maria Valdez or giving Maria Valdez a ride home from, a, I believe, a CSF function. The purpose of sentencing is to achieve justice. Justice is achieved by imposing consequences for our actions, which are appropriate to the defendant's criminal conduct and to the harm caused by that criminal conduct. The harm caused by this defendant's conduct is catastrophic. Chris Avalos is dead. He will never see his senior year in high school. He will never play water polo again. He will not attend college, and he will not spend another day, not one moment, with his brother Ethan or his sister Desiree. Anna Sheld is dead. She will not see her senior year in high school. She will not sing in the choir or play another minute of volleyball and she will not attend the University of California at Santa Cruz to study law. And she will not spend another moment with her sister Elizabeth or her brother Will. Neither of their parents will have the opportunity to see their children grow into adults, to watch them marry, have children, and grow up. They will not understand the joy of grandchildren because of your actions. Bryce Aguilar, was a three-sport athlete who no longer has the use of his legs. He is confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, a sentence for which he does not have parole. Maria Valdez suffered a broken arm, but far worse, she will live with the memory for the rest of her life that Chris Avalos was only in the area of your driving because he was giving her a ride home. And because of that kind act, he is dead. Probation would allow you to enjoy the very life that you have selfishly taken from Christopher Avalos and Anna Schell, and to enjoy the life that you have destroyed for Bryce Aguilar and Maria Valdez. That is not justice, and that is not consequences appropriate to your conduct. <clears throat> Mr. Perry, you asked what message we can send. The message we can send is that there are consequences for decisions. Driving under the influence of alcohol is not an accident. It is a choice. Driving under the influence is a danger to society. We can send that message. And we can send the message that when you choose to drive under the influence and you kill somebody, we will remove you from society to protect society. Ms. Chedister, stand. 
In count one, for the second degree murder of Christopher Avalos, I sentence you to 15 years to life in the State Department of Corrections. In count two, for the second degree murder of Ann Schell, I sentence you to a consecutive sentence of 15 to life in the state prison in the California Department of Corrections. For count three, the violation of Vehicle Code Section 23153, driving while under the influence, causing injury to Bryce Aguilar and Maria Valdez, I sentence you to a consecutive term of three years in the California Department of Corrections. For leaving uh, Mr. Aguilar paralyzed, I sentence you to a consecutive term of five years in the state prison. And for causing great bodily injury to Maria Valdez, I sentence you a consecutive term of three years in the Department of Corrections. You have an aggregate term of 41 years to life in the state prison. You must serve 41 calendar years before you may request the Department of Corrections to schedule a parole hearing. You will be 59 years old before you may ask to have a parole hearing. With that, you are remanded in the California Department of Corrections at Chowchilla to serve out your term. Bailiff, remove the prisoner. With that, court is adjourned.